so we're doing this again. <laughs> How are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. So today, first of all, one of you guys sent me this in my P.O. box and it's literally the cute, I love it so much. And it has a little glow stick on the back. It's like a little embroidered pillow and it says smoky glow and then a little glow stick and it says hashtag glow sticks. I was so thank you to who sent this to me. I'm gonna send you a thank you card, but I really appreciate it. And it's gonna be in my background now because I absolutely love it. Um, anyway, hi, hello, how are you? So today, lots going on. I'm just so incredibly like annoyed at this point. Uh, like honestly, I, I don't even know why I'm making this video. I'm annoyed, I'm pissed off, I'm just so sick of this person. But at the same time, and I, and I know, I know that by me talking about this, I am giving him what he wants which is attention, I'm aware. However, I also have this like internal battle of do I give this person more attention or do I inform people that could stumble upon him of his true like motives, intentions, like what is going on with this person? And I choose the latter most of the time because even though this will give him momentary attention, this will also forever be a place that people can come and find out the true things that are going on with this man. So today we're gonna be talking about the rewired soul. My last video on the rewired soul was probably, it definitely wasn't the biggest video I've ever done, but it was definitely a video that was a little bit like, it ended up being controversial because first of all, it was like the first video I really swore in and a lot of you guys were shook. Um, <laughs> that was kind of funny. But also because he made a response video to me and I have not really talked about that response video. And the reason I haven't really talked about it is because to be perfectly honest with you guys, he didn't say anything. <laughs> He does a lot of talking without actually saying anything, and I think that's been even more proven um, the past couple of days with the content he's been putting out. He really didn't say anything. He really didn't dispute any of my points. He really didn't touch on any of my points. He avoided the really big criticisms I had of him. And if you want to watch my video, I'll link it down below. The first, I've done two now on him. This will be my third. So if, ugh. So if you wanted to, if you want to watch those videos and see what I'm talking about, you can see. But he responded to it. He didn't touch on it. He used a very flattering picture in the thumbnail. Chris, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, and I was kind of just like, I, I, I don't. I'm not like a YouTuber that wants to like be the drama. So I didn't want to like go back and forth with this dude because I didn't want to like be the drama that people were talking about. Like I just want to talk about it. I don't want to be it, right? And also I didn't feel like he made any credible points. Something I wish I had talked about, something I'll talk about now, is my personal experience with Chris during that time, which included extreme gaslighting on his part, and I'll touch on that. So um, when I made my video, I he did comment on my video, and I don't remember exactly what was even said, but basically Basically, I was just like, I still think you're full of it. Um, I think that was, I was nice though. I wasn't outwardly rude to him because I'm not outwardly rude to people, like in general. Like I say what I wanna say, but if you come to me, like I'm not gonna be a jerk. Like I'm not a rude person. I've never been a rude person. Like that's just not my style. Like you, obviously you watch the video, you know how I feel. Like that's all I need. To, I don't need to be rude to you. I can be cordial even if I don't like you. It's like this crazy thing. So I responded to his comment, basically again, just being like, you're full of it, I think. Um, and then I got a DM from him later, I think the next day, of him being like, just a heads up, I just posted a video about you. And I was, I responded and I was just like, thank you for the heads up. Like, thank you for that. I don't care, <laughs> but like, thank you for that heads up. Um, so then he invited me to be on his podcast to talk about my addiction story. For those of you that don't know, first of all, I'm in school to be a social worker. I'm in my senior year of my BSW program. Second of all, I'm five years sober. Hi, um, <laughs> I don't drink or do drugs. Pretty, That's pretty much it for me. So he wanted me to come on and talk about my addiction story. And he was like, maybe we can discuss, or he said like, I think maybe we can discuss some of the controversy around me if you want to. And I was like, no, <laughs> like I don't want to be on your podcast. I didn't even answer, I don't think, in the DM at first because I was just like, no, like I don't want to be on your podcast. I was noticing in his comment section of the video that he made about me, he was telling people that we had talked in the DMs and that we were cool. 
I'm sorry, what? I literally only said to him, like, thank you for letting me know, and no, I don't want to be on your podcast. And suddenly, we've talked in the DMs, we've hashed, I had people DMing me, being like, are you cool with the rewired soul? Like, he's telling people you're cool with him. It just felt so manipulative. It felt like because I wasn't outwardly a jerk to him, he was like, oh, we're cool, we're best friends, like, we're fine, we're all good. We weren't, we're not all good. I don't like you. I said it, like, ten times in my video that I don't like him. So then, he basically accused me in the video, too, of using him for views. That that was not the reason I made the video. I feel like I made that initial video because I was so angry about what he was saying and what he was doing. And that's why I'm making this video today because I'm angry. I don't know if you can tell because I'm yelling. <laughs> But I'm angry and I'm just like annoyed about the whole thing. So I commented on that video and I was like, don't want to be on your podcast. If me telling you to F off multiple times in my video wasn't clear enough, I don't want to, I don't want to be friends with you. I don't like you. And he was like, you didn't tell me to F off, which means leads me to believe I don't think he actually watched my whole first video before he talked about it. I know he's very big on preaching about like research. I don't think he watched the entire video because he barely, he didn't touch on anything I said. That has all now occurred. That's over and done with. And then he said he was coming out with his book, right? He's coming out with this book about cancer cancel culture and he's going to talk about his experience with cancel culture and I was like I gotta read the book it's free first of all so I'm not giving him money win-win for me second of all like I just wanted to know I guess I I guess I kind of hoped which this is silly because I, I feel like after watching a bunch of his content I should have been a better judge of his character but I guess I kind of felt like maybe this was going to be the opportunity for him to like, say like I'm sorry like apologize like own up to the mistakes he made like I thought that might be it and I also was just kind of interested in like what he was gonna say and I also was like debating making a video on it so I was like I'm just going to read this book. I read that book cover to cover, okay? I know he's going to sit there and claim I didn't. I know he's going to say I hit control F. Guess what? My name wasn't in the book because you didn't want to punch down. We'll talk about that in a second. My name wasn't even in the book. I read that entire thing. He did mention me, just not by name. I, <laughs> I read that book cover to cover. And then after I read it, I was talking to my boyfriend about it and I was like, should I make a video? Should I not? And he was like, you know what? No. He was like, nobody's really going to read this book because nobody really cares. He was like, you know, you said what you had to say. What you have to say doesn't change now because it was all stuff we already knew. And I was like, you're right. So I didn't make a video about his book, right? I saw Primick made a video. I thought Primick's video was great. I thought it accurately <laughs> pretty well summed up the book in general. And after that happened, I kind of like read the book and I was like, you know what? I'm just done with this person. Like I'm over it. My my job here is done, like wash my hands of it. And then I started noticing more things that were happening um, lately, this past like probably four days. Um, Cody Rance, her on blast. And I thought, if you guys don't know who Cody Rance is, she has, I think she has about 5,000 subscribers. She used to do rants on Twitter and she's kind of switched over to YouTube drama channel type content. I would go right, I'm going to link her video that she did about the situation in the description. Definitely go check it out. Cody asked to interview him for a video and he was like, I read the DMs because she posted them. And she, he was like, I'm going to make a video asking my viewers if they think I should do this interview. And she was like, okay, like I have to make a video responding to that if you do that because you're gonna shade me, obviously. And then within the span of 24 hours, I noticed he had made another video. And so I DM'd Cody and I was like, what is going on? And she just kind of explained it to me. I guess Cody, Cody reached out for the interview. He said he was gonna do it. And then he backed out because she went on live and read his book and was critiquing the book, which honestly, her critiques, very fair. The book had a horrible grammar, like awful. I don't know who edited it. I think it was Chris probably edited it. Like it wasn't very cohesive. It didn't make a lot of sense. It jumped around a lot. I would give it like two stars out of five if I was trying to be objective, okay? The reason that Cody did that and the reason that Cody read the book on live was because she knew that he had been claiming that people who were criticizing him just weren't reading the book. That was the reason. They were just ill-informed. They didn't read the book. So she was like, I'm gonna prove to you that I read the book. And then he canceled the interview and then he made a video about, about her. So first of all, let's just talk about that whole situation because talk about punching down. You're the one that just made your standing on a moral high ground when the drama channels were having issues with Earth Mother and saying there was no, absolutely no reason and no circumstance where a YouTuber should be punching down at another YouTuber, where a channel who is much bigger should be crapping on or bringing attention to or being negative towards a smaller channel. There's just no situation where that should be the case. That was your whole video. You stood up on your high horse and you claimed you never did that, which is first of all, just a lie because when I made my video about you, I had significantly less subscribers than you. You had no problem putting my name in the title. And now with Cody, 
Cody, you have absolutely no problem punching down on someone who is significantly smaller than you. So that in and of itself annoyed me because it's just, again, like he literally is the most hypocritical person. Like case in point right there, first point. Then I started noticing that he was making like a ton of videos in like the span of one day. I'm gonna read the titles to you. I watched all of them. I know he's going to claim if he talks about this that I didn't do my research. I'll show you the red bars that show that I watched every single video, okay? Some of them multiple times because I wanted to make sure that I was right, okay? I wanted to make sure when I talked about this, I said what I wanted to say right, okay? The first thing that kicked all this off was four days ago, and it was how I made Primic filthy rich. He basically said, I could sum this whole video up in like four seconds. He basically thinks that Primic made all of the videos he made on him for money. I just like can't, like I can't understand how somebody who has made easily 50 videos on Trisha Paytas thinks they have any ground to stand on when talking about making videos for the sake of money. I can't, I cannot express the hypocrisy in that enough, first and foremost. And also, I don't know, like Primic, I, I actually really like Primic. I disagree with some of his content, but I enjoy the content. Like you can tell he puts a lot of work into it. I think Primic feels very similar to me and other people who make videos about this guy. I think we genuinely think he's a dangerous person. And I think we genuinely do not like him and genuinely just feel like more information needs to be out there about him. I could be wrong. I don't know Primic. I don't know his intentions. He could be totally money driven, but that's the impression I get. Um, whereas somebody who puts out one, two, three, four, 13 videos in the span of two days, I would probably assume they were more money hungry than Primic, who uploads a video like once every three weeks. That's just me. He did the Analyzing Cody Rants video, which is the video I just talked about that I found incredibly interesting because apparently we're not allowed to punch down. But apparently when it's, when it's him, he can punch down all he wants. When he feels he's under attack, he can punch down. But if the drama channels do it against somebody, God, oh my God. Horrifying. So then he made a video titled, I Need to Apologize. This video was the one where I was just like, come on, like he's gotta be being, he's, this has gotta be a joke. The essential mood of this video, <laughs> He didn't apologize, spoiler alert, he didn't. Um, he never apologizes. If you read his book, which I wouldn't honestly recommend because it's just a waste of time. It's just him making excuses for how he's amazing and everyone else screwed him over and how cancel culture is bad. If I hear him say the hate mob and cancel culture one more time, I'm gonna lose my mind. Like, other people would rightfully call that holding you accountable, okay? Like get get it straight if you're gonna be, if you're gonna talk about it, at least be honest. Like it was holding you accountable. In this video, he basically talks about, <laughs> he needs to apologize because he came to this realization. He was talking to his friend and he came to this realization that people on YouTube and people who watch YouTube videos don't read books. They don't read books. People who watch YouTube videos, they don't read books. I just love, love, I find it almost, it's honestly comical, the mental gymnastics he had to do because he didn't get a lot of downloads on his book, I guess. He got like 1300 or something like that. He didn't get a lot of downloads. And so he, instead of being like, people just aren't interested in my book and what I have to say because people are over my bullshit, he's like, no, 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 no. Nobody reads books anymore. Nobody, books dead. Libraries, where? Like book Barnes and Nobles, who? Like he's like, nobody reads books anymore. Nobody, No, we all just watch videos. Audible and Kindle are like one of the most popular apps right now in the Apple App Store. Like how can you sit there with a straight face and be so goddamn condescending and look at a group of people and say, you guys don't read books. I have, e I'm not even gonna tell you how many books I read this year because you know what? I don't have to prove myself. It's so, baffling to me that you would look at a camera with a straight face and say people don't read books. And this is an ongoing theme in the barrage of videos that he put out this weekend, like an ongoing theme. He says people don't read books more times than I think he says cancel culture, which has to be really different for him. This is his new shtick. People don't read books. It's not people don't read my book. It's people don't read books. That's his new thing, right? So then he said, made a video analyzing Petty Page, which this video, honestly, it was literally just, it was, it was literally just like a cash grab. Like he just wanted views. This is one of his most viewed videos from this whole situation. And I think that's the only reason he made it was because he didn't say anything of note, like nothing. There was nothing of note said in that video. Um, and then he made the video analyzing the Reddit channel who turned on me. This one was super interesting because he just took the audiobook snippet from his book 
and just played it in a video. And it was talking about a channel who he had become really close with, who basically ditched him when he got canceled, right? Honestly, dude, like, who, like, get over it. Like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be cold. I understand that the mental health of a person who is being actively canceled or held accountable for their actions, I'm not obtuse to the fact that even though I think be being held accountable is something that needs to happen, I definitely think there are people on the internet that take that too far, and I definitely think that it can affect someone's mental health, right? So I get that. But like, if it's just an internet buddy, if one of my internet buddies just stopped talking to me tomorrow and was like, you're too problematic for me, like, I'm sorry, I just can't do it, okay. <laughs> Thank you for being my friend. Like, thanks for being a friend for a hot minute. Like, goodbye. Like, it sucks, yeah, but you're gonna write a whole chapter putting this person on blast because they just didn't wanna be friends with you, buddy? What? Like, and he also, I think the biggest thing you'll notice about his book is every, if you do read it, it's free until tomorrow. <laughs> every other sentence in this book is all about the good, amazing things that Chris did. Like, he helped this guy so much because he was so down in himself and he had horrible self-esteem. And him and his girlfriend made this guy merch because they were just so, like, loved him and were so positive and all this other crap, right? And it was all of these things. And it's like every other sentence, like, that's what comes out of his mouth is, like, telling you exactly why he's amazing and he shouldn't have been canceled because he is amazing. There's a whole chapter in the book about how he did charity live stream as if that makes up for the behavior that he got called out for but like whatever did you know people who donate to charity like are immune to criticism it's crazy and then he did analyzing the right opinion so interesting listening to him do these mental gymnastics because he basically talked about how the right opinion presents this very like professional demeanor in his videos to professional and well-researched demeanor in his videos but then on twitter he told him that burden of investigation shouldn't have to fall on the viewer which is just an opinion and the right opinion proves that in his videos he is incredibly well researched and explains things incredibly well in his videos so that the viewer doesn't feel like they have to go research a bunch of stuff after the fact like that's just his opinion. Then he did analyzing the drama channel who abandoned me. This video is about Peter Mon. Um, and honestly, he says he was, he knew that the drama channels didn't actually read his book because we didn't talk about this chapter when it came out. And I'll tell you what, I almost did when it came out. I almost did. When I first read the book and I read that, I read that and I was like, oh crap, this is going to cause a crap storm. And then you know what I did? I just didn't talk about it because I didn't care. I didn't really care about you. I didn't really care about Peter's role. I thought it was really disrespectful of him to put in screenshots that Peter had sent because he did he put in full-on screenshots that Peter sent him in which Peter explicitly says I am only telling you this because I don't think you are going to go screenshot it and show other people explicitly says that in the screenshots the rewrite soul's like nah like I don't care I'm gonna do that anyway like you obviously didn't want me to show other people these text messages because they're personal and private but like nah I'm gonna do it anyway for my book like he talks about how Peter Mon and him were like friends and then when he got canceled, Peter, and honestly, like, I don't blame Peter at all. Like, Peter, just by what you think about him, and I have my opinions about Peter, but he went through hell and back multiple different times with multiple different creators, and he has been, to his credit, he has been pretty much staying in his own lane since everything happened with Petty Page, and I think that is the best thing that a person can do. And I didn't want to drag Peter into all of this because, honestly, and he did nicer things than most people would have. He basically told Chris, I will still be there for you from a sobriety standpoint point because Peter is also sober and in sober like in the whole AA thing and the whole thing about that is like you're there for each other like if another person you know or you know someone else like you're there for each other in those situations right and so Peter was like I will still be there for me from a sobriety standpoint like I will still support you if you need help so like with sobriety but I cannot be like a friend to you because I don't want to be canceled again number one and number two I think some of the things that have been brought to light are pretty sketchy about you that's the thing that blows my mind he has these like online relationships with people which is like don't trust people that you meet online <laughs> like for the most part most of the people you meet online you don't know them for real like you know them and you talk to them and like you have conversations and you kind of feel like you know them but you don't actually know these people for real until you actually go and like meet them and hang out with them and see who they are not online like it's not uncommon for people to hear things about other people online and then be like nah I don't really want to associate with you anymore like you seem a little 
different than I thought you were once people exposed things about you. Anyway. So then he did a video analyzing Amelia Fart. This video is not about Amelia Fart. The video is him comparing himself to Amelia Fart. He specifically says in the video he wanted to compare himself to Martin Luther King Jr. and he wanted to compare himself to the Wright brothers, but he knew people would call him out for comparing himself to those people, rightfully so. So he decided to compare himself to Amelia Fart. To his credit, he said he's not comparable to Amelia Fart because there's no one like her. That's the first thing he said that I was like, true. And then he basically talks about, honestly, this one was so cliche. I love that he tries to use like big, big words, like big psychological words to prove his point and make you think that he knows what he's talking about. Because this video was essentially just saying, you know that quote that was from like Hannah Montana? Why are you trying so hard to be like everyone else when you were born to stand out? That's been on every girl's Tumblr since like 2011, okay? This is not a new original idea. Like everybody thinks they should think differently. Like you shouldn't go with the crowd. It's like what you're told from the beginning. If your friend jumped off a bridge, would you? Don't be a sheep. Like don't follow the crowd. And he loves to again put himself on this moral high ground where he gets to say, Do you notice that like other channels are just like a carbon copy of each other? Not this guy. Like I'm not gonna be a carbon copy of other people. I'm gonna be a free thinker. I'm gonna do things that are different. Like I made four apology videos instead of just a standard one apology video. Like I'm crazy. I think outside the box. It's like why why is everyone on earth like bad and immoral and terrible? Everyone on this platform is not good except for you. You are the only good YouTuber. You are the only one coming up with original content. You are the only drama channel who has come up with an original concept. You. You are the only one. You are the special one. Like shut up. This video was such a freaking reach for me and the fact that he used Amelia Fart's name for views it just further solidifies to me this all this whole thing is a money grab and an attention grab. Like that's what this is. So then he his video analyzing Repzilla. This one I got mad not because of even what he really said because again he's just mad that Repzilla turned on him. This is like a, a version of like 13 Reasons Why where he's just like doing his tapes and just like talking about like all of the reasons he doesn't like people because of personal reasons. I got mad about the Repzilla video for like a different reason. I got mad about the Repzilla video because in the comments and I don't know a lot about Repzilla. I don't watch his content. I don't really know a lot about him but in the comments somebody said that Repzilla had a traumatic brain injury and that you cannot apply standard standard psychological like things to him because he had a traumatic brain injury and the rewired soul told that commenter that she was ableist for thinking that way and that was an ableist mindset and that that's not true he like rejects that whatever and she commented back and was like well my son's in a fucking wheelchair you asshole and he has a traumatic brain injury and this is what all of the doctors have told me and this just further again like I talk before about the importance of having credentials when you're going to be giving such serious advice and talking about things as seriously as mental health. And I've said it before, I don't have an issue with people spreading their own experiences and trying to like shed light on their experiences so other people can feel less alone or other people can learn from it. But Chris tries to come from a place like he's so incredibly educated and that is one of the most ignorant things I've ever heard somebody say. I have had a traumatic brain injury. I had a TBI when I was in middle school and it followed me up and through high school. I had a serious, serious concussion that affected so many facets of my mental health. It's, I have a whole story time video on it. It was a, tr I'm gonna like get choked up talking about it. I don't mean to, but it was like such a traumatizing experience. And to hear somebody who claims to be this like loves to learn mental health guru who like is so much more experienced than all these other people, like to hear him say that, to say it's ableist, to think that a TBI gives context to a situation is just so incredibly gross, misinformative, and ignorant. A person having a TBI does change the way that their brain chemistry works. You cannot apply basic understandings of psychology to those people. This per the commenter is completely right. It's not ableist. It's providing context. Finally, the last video he made that I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about the other crazy videos he's posted because he's just back to trying to get views. Will the rewired soul get into the good place? And this video is so interesting to me because he, after making, oh, and the big thing he talked about in the Repzilla video that was besides the whole, that whole comment section thing, the big thing he talked about was that Repzilla uh, thinks he is this moral high ground person and thinks he is morally better than other people and the rewired soul doesn't like that. Again with the hypocrisy, but like whatever. I can't, I can only say hypocrisy so many times in one video. So then in this The Good Place video, he says, 
which is this is just like the key, the funniest thing of the century. He literally says in his video that he is going to make a new series titled Will Blank Get Into the Good Place? And it's basically talking about how he thinks he's not going to judge the morality of other people. He wants to talk about how we think we're so perfect as drama channels, commentary channels, people who call out other people. We think we're so perfect. We're not perfect. <laughs> and we should be called out for it. I think about my own channel when I hear things like that, of people being like, well, you're not perfect. You are so correct. A plus, you're right, I am not perfect. I have so much crap that I've been through in my life. I have done so many shitty things to people. Like, I am absolutely not a perfect person. However, I do not call out people when they're not being perfect, okay? I don't call out people because they used a plastic straw, okay? I don't call people out because they're not vegan. I don't call people out because they shop from fast fashion. I don't call people out for those reasons, right? Like, I call people out when they do something that objectively we as a society condemn and think is wrong. If I did something that as a society we should condemn and think is wrong, I would totally understand being called out for that, right? Because that's like a logic. This is where people get it twisted. This is where people get cancel culture twisted. Because I think the majority of people genuinely just want to hold people accountable. And that's what Chris can't seem to comprehend. I guarantee he had some vulture people that were just absolutely attacking him. That is the vocal minority of what cancel culture actually is. The majority of people, and I've said this before, the majority of people who are trying to cancel somebody are just trying to hold a person accountable. They're just trying to say what you're doing is not okay. I personally partake in talking about people. One of the biggest reasons I do is because I think if one person can watch that and hear like, hey, what they did isn't okay and here's why, and then they can change their behavior because of that, I think that is such a positive, positive thing. I've been yelling for like 45 minutes and my jaw hurts so bad. <laughs> But to sum this all up, basically, the rewired soul is still on, on it. He's still on his, oh my god, I didn't even talk about the medicine thing. Oh my god, do I even have time? Do you guys care if this video is like an hour? I swear, this is gonna be like an hour long video. Before all of this happened, I made an Instagram live about this. The rewired soul made a video about Jordan Peterson going to rehab, who... I don't really know who Jordan Peterson is. I'm going to be fully, completely honest with you guys. I heard in my live stream he's done some pretty crappy things and he's like not a great person. Cannot confirm or deny. Don't really know a lot about that. However, the rewired soul made me so mad that I got on Instagram live and started like yelling and I never do that. Like I'm not a reactionary person when it comes to things like that. I like to formulate my opinions and then really just speak them. But in this video, he said something that was so infuriating and it wasn't the clip that was getting circulated on Twitter because there was a clip circulating on Twitter that he was saying that all medications are bad and that's what the selective clip made it seem like and I was like that seems like a weird thing for him to say so I looked and that's not what he said he didn't say all like collective medication is bad he said that if you're a former addict getting put on addictive anxiety medicines which do exist is probably not a good thing for you as a person who's an addict I don't get I don't put myself on anti anxiety medicine that is addictive that's just a precaution I like to take that's also a very personal choice the big thing about it is sobriety and mental health and mental illness they go hand in hand so if your mental illness is down here the chances of you relapsing and not being able to be sober goes down to here as well and if your mental health is up here your sobriety is up here, right? Like they go hand in hand, they work together. Chances are if your mental health is in a decline, the chances of you relapsing or not being able to keep your sobriety are large, right? So if you're in a mental health decline and the only thing that is gonna help you is being put on something that might be an addictive substance to get you back up, that does not mean that you're relapsing. That means you're doing what's in your best interest to keep your mental health up. That doesn't mean it shouldn't be regulated. That doesn't mean you shouldn't take that decision seriously or talk to your doctor, obviously talk to your doctor but to make such a generalized statement is idiotic. Now, that was not the thing I had the problem with the most. He used this example of this man who got put on an addictive anxiety medication because his wife is dying, uh, which is a super traumatic experience. He used this situation of this man going to rehab because he got addicted to this addictive substance as an excuse to talk about how he might be smarter than this person because he's been able to stay sober without having to go onto addictive drugs and getting re-addicted. So he probably knows more than this person who has a PhD. He now, because he has ways to cope with it that doesn't involve medication. He's able to cope with all the bad things in his life that doesn't require medications. 
So that means that this guy, just because he had to go on medication and got addicted, I didn't know this actually, but did you know that I guess in, in Chrisland, if you have to go on medication and you relapse and you get re-addicted, suddenly your PhD of, in psychology just goes out the window and suddenly the person who doesn't know absolutely anything is suddenly the person we should be listening to because he's able to do it without medication. And it's like, honestly, Chris, good for fucking you. That is not everyone's story. That is not everyone's life. That is an idiotic ignorant and honestly even though like that's such a med shaming thing to say like people need medication some people need addictive medication because to be perfectly honest with you guys when I had to go get on a plane a few weeks ago and I talked to you guys about my extreme flight anxiety my doctor prescribed me a very small dosage of addictive anxiety medication so I could go get on that plane because to be perfectly honest with you this is something that I've had to personally struggle with so I didn't have to take addictive medications what's so screwed up about it is those drugs are not they don't work as well <laughs> they're not as strong and that's because they're not addictive but they're not as strong they still I still have panic attacks pretty much I would say every day, even though I'm on anxiety medication. And my anxiety medication helps me function, but it doesn't stop the big things like an actual anti-anxiety medication normally would, right? And that's something that I've come to terms with that I'm okay with. I am never going to sit here and shame another person who doesn't want to deal with that on a daily basis because God is it awful sometimes. Is it absolutely horrific most of the time? Like Chris lacks all self-awareness that other people might be on a different journey than him. That his journey is not the right journey. And honestly, Chris, I really truly hope that you never have to go through something like a relapse because I met, I met a guy, oh my God, this is turning into like a crazy video, but this is so many different topics. But I met a guy who had had I think eight or nine years sober. And he basically felt like he was like the poster child for sobriety because he got sober really young and he worked the program. He spoke at like AA conventions. Like he was this huge figure in the AA community. He like sponsored a bunch of other people. Like his, his sobriety was like his identity, right? And then he relapsed and he lost those nine years and he relapsed. And just the absolute torment you could see that he put himself through for for going through that and for having to experience that, like that torment that he had to experience because he did that and he made those choices. It's a horrific, horrific thing to see. And it is not something that should be shamed. Shaming Jordan Peterson for relapsing and shaming him and saying that he's no longer as qualified as you are because he relapsed. What a shameful thing to do. That is not, not what the AA community stands for at all. We are there for each other through highs and lows. Like that is what it is all about. We hold each other accountable and we don't let people get away with their BS, but we don't shame people when they relapse. Like that's such an ignorant, ignorant way to act. And I'm honestly shocked that this person like went through the 12 steps and went through AA. I am shocked. I feel like that didn't get retained by him at all. I am shocked that he would treat somebody who would relapse this way. I am appalled that he would use this opportunity to try to make himself look better and to use this person as a stepping stool to seem more legit. It's disgusting. Disgusting behavior. It's, this is the same way I feel when the whole Taylor Nicole Dean thing happened. Same exact way I feel. It's a fucked up thing to do. It's awful. I'm heated now. <laughs> I gotta chill. I get so mad about this stuff though because it's like I wish somebody had the subscriber base that he had who actually was like an empathetic person who actually knew what the fuck they were talking about with mental health and addiction. Like I wish. I wish but they don't and he does and it's like people are stumbling upon his videos and taking his word as truth and they're it's just not. None of it is truth. It's all biased. It's all self-serving. He doesn't care about anyone but himself and that is evident with all of his videos and everything he posts and everything he posts everything in his book it's all evident i gotta wrap this up i've been literally doing this for like an hour um i hope you guys like this video uh if you did please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither honestly just so happy you're watching me thank you so much for being here please register to vote <laughs> talk about it all my videos but please vote in your local state and federal elections and somebody also notified me that if you think you're registered to vote uh double check that because I guess some people aren't registered and don't even know it so make sure you're double checking to make sure you are ready and good to go for all the voting that is going to be coming up in the next couple years and also if you don't live in America please make sure you vote in any of your elections or just use your voice to be heard in any way you can. Stay informed on what's going on. Make sure you're using your voice in a positive way because the world really needs it. Um, 
yeah, I think that's it for me. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!